We had an opportunity to get a sneak preview of the upcoming game Robotech Reconstruction. And I used to watch Robotech as a kid. I was really excited about this one, and we're happy to share our first impressions with you here on Legendary Tactics. I'm here with Cax. Cax and I were part of a kind of a play test group uh, last week, and it was uh, quite a good experience, actually. Oh, yeah, it was, a, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. Being a total uh, a noob to uh, Robotech, it was a really, uh, really interesting kind of uh, adventure for sure. Yes, yes. And it's, as I said at the, at the outset, I mean, I watched this as a kid. Um, it was one of my favorite shows when I was at that age because it was, you know, and even now it, it, it holds up pretty well. Like the, uh, the, the, the story and everything is, is pretty neat. And yeah, it's pretty dark yeah. for a kid's show, actually. It's, uh, oh, is it's, it? Eh? Okay. Yeah, it's surprisingly dark. Huh. Um, but uh, it's it's really well done, and the uh, you know it has a lot of like the the mechs and the Veritech fighters and all that stuff. So this game is attempting to bring that to uh, you know to life in a. In and an we were told, way. if I'm not if I'm not mistaken, that they actually did emulate uh, the events of the series in this game as well. Yes, yeah, the first uh, few episodes, eight, maybe the first nine episodes, I think they said. So that's right. Yeah, so they've actually yeah. brought those into this game, which is kind of cool too. So you're yeah. actually reliving some of those events yeah and what's interesting for our audience um is that you know it's actually based on the coin series of games by gmt yes um, so yes. that's a really interesting take on uh robotech you wouldn't think that they, that there's a coin uh and robotech would fit together uh but in this case um that's what yeah, they yeah. Have, i definitely you definitely done. see the overlap for sure that's it's yes. very cool yeah. Now it's not a coin game, but it's inspired by coin. Um, Very much so. Yeah. 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 And uh, e even uh, as far as the factions goes, each faction is is asymmetrical in its win conditions, which is kind of neat as well. So that's another kind of crossover with uh, with coin. Yes. Yeah. And so yeah. So you have you know the 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 map with different locations from the series, and we have, there's four factions basically. So. Um, I'll tell you, yeah, let's alternate here. So I'll do the first one, which is the Robotech Defense Force. And in coin, this would be the government faction. Uh, there's three types of units uh, that the RDF uh, has. Um, they've got Rick Hunter as a hero. They've got the Veritech fighters and they have military mechas. And uh, they have very similar uh, kind of activities to, uh, you know, in coin games, you've got the move, the, the patrol, attack and uh, tax or what, what might be terror and for some factions um, and you can also do uh, certain things like flip certain factions to your uh, you know to your side and uh, the goal is to um, end a round with at least five uh, content um, Zentradi uh, citizens basically um, and uh, the idea is that there's some Zentradi uh, um, that were uh, left behind after the last big battle and they're trying to integrate into society and you're trying to get them to uh, you know support the government basically to be happy and content and move them along the track here of contentedness and uh, and you know you want them to be in the green you need five of them to do that yeah, so then moving along to the Robotech Expeditionary Force, the REF as they're uh, short formed, um, they're kind of a uh, they're very much a Robotech kind of uh, character, a very very um, yeah. You gotta love those battle pods. Those are yes, classic. and they have this very very cool uh, airship blimp that kind of floats around the board, yes. and uh, you uh, it, uh, it 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 is sort of the the hub for what you can do in, in those particular areas. You can uh, land forces down through it and attack as well through it. Um, it has a move, a recruit, an influence, and an income action. Yep. And then for its special actions, it can flip or scan with that uh, the airship, or it can attack and bombard. So it, it's got uh, it's got some. I did find it a little bit slow because uh, you, you have to sort of first assemble the um, your your pods, and then you have to actually construct them, and then you can put them into play on the board. So there's there's a sort of a multi multi step there to get your 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 bots on the board. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, its win condition is uh, to have uh, control uh, along with the is, the uh, RDF of seven territories on the board. Yes, so, yes. 
and and so yeah and by control it's the same thing as coin you have to have the most units in that uh, territory um, yeah they seem to be very slow I know it, it felt when we played you didn't get a lot of momentum going um, it's tough though it's yeah, tough because you got to spend resources to to construct your battle pods you know because they go into assembly and then you got to construct them and then they get blown up sometimes so you got to rebuild right. them exactly um, yeah yeah but having the flagship uh, floating around and and scanning you know revealing uh, uh, hidden units and then being able to bombard them out of existence that's pretty cool yeah exactly yeah yeah, yeah. so um, yeah so that's the uh, uh, the REF, the R -E -F, right? yeah. And then next up is uh, uh, Chiron and the Zentradi Rebellion. And I was actually this faction. And the idea behind them is they've got uh, three units. They've got Chiron, uh, the villain uh, character, the overt uh, uh, mecha. So the, the, the basically they've got the covert soldiers or the overt, overt mechas, basically. So you just have these um, they basically gorillas, again, just to tie it into coin. And, you know, they, they can move and, and recruit. They can, f like, flip units over to, uh, you know, to their side, like, especially from the REF. Uh, they can bring units over from that side. They can attack in ambush, and they can, uh, uh, you know, steal income. So basically, their, their movement is very covert. They can pop up anywhere on the board. And, and they actually ended up winning in our game. Yes, yes. I, well, again, I think the person showing us the game, Austin, was being just very kind and pulling a lot of punches because I, I know that I made some mistakes in my play. Even though I yeah. came out with a win, I think he was uh, just there to facilitate. But uh, w the idea is that if you have the Zentradi citizen here with the, you know, where the uh, RDF is trying to get it to uh, the, that citizen to be happy, the um, Zentradi rebellion is trying to move them from discontent and then off the track uh, to the so then they essentially become a covert soldier of the uh, Zentradi rebellion and once they get uh, it seems like a lot would they need 11 uh, to move 11 you know Zentradi citizens off the track to the right uh, and it does seem like a tall order when you begin but when especially since you need Chiron in the space to shift uh, their their uh, their attitude um, it's, uh, you know, it's something that, um, you know, it was uh, not easy, but it was easier than I expected to get that, to get that right. done. So, right, right. Yeah. So the last faction then is the Anti-Unification League, the AUL. Mm -hmm. And uh, their, their, their hero is uh, Min May. Yep. And I, I love that she gets to throw concerts. That's yes. awesome. <laughs> well, if you've seen the series, she's kind of, you know, she's, she's the pop star singer oh is she celebrity. okay so yeah so she oh, wow. she's yeah she can actually throw concerts as as a special activity and uh and actually like shift uh it, it, it's influencing so basically it shifts uh the terror the uh, centrati citizens in either direction so it's a way for to mitigate the uh the wind conditions of either the rdf or the centrati rebellion in that right. they can sh she can throw a concert and, e and either sing supportive songs or protest music <laughs> depending on <laughs> depending on her depending mood on what, yeah, her mood and what needs to happen so i thought that's i right. thought that was pretty funny that is, that's, that's awesome yeah, yeah that's and of good. course their victory is control of at least five cities yes uh, so one neat feature about uh, the uh, AUL is that they they can place these city markers down, mm -hmm. and they actually increase the value of that particular zone that they're in. So, um, however, if they lose control of that city, it those those points go to whatever faction actually does take it over. So it's yeah, it's a bit of a risk play. Well, it's really the, it's, the, it's the RDF that would likely benefit the most from that um, because the cities don't matter to the Zentradi Rebellion particularly, but as much right, um, okay. I don't okay. know if they and matter then, to course, the REF, actually. No, it's they're just interested in control of territories. So, yeah. yeah. And uh, the AUL can move. They do influence. They can recruit, uh, yeah. get income. And then, of course, their special actions could be to build or fabricate or to attack and riot. Yes, yeah. So, so yeah, and they have partisans, which are, are like weaker soldiers. They're not that, uh, not as powerful as what the RDF can uh, muster, but... You know they're they're uh, you know they're they're forced to be reckoned with. I I have a feeling that uh, in our game that the AUL um, could have done better than like they could have perhaps won, but 
Uh, it's tough to say. Yeah, uh, yeah. But uh, but it is interesting though. The as a faction, um, they're kind of there. To, they're building cities and then trying to control them for the win. Uh, now one so. one neat mechanic that we uh, we haven't talked about yet with the game are these um, these three zones: the industrial, the fabrication, and the protoculture zone. Yes. which um, are just ways to gather resources through the game for your faction. Yep. And uh, it, it's basically at the end of each round, if you control uh, that any of those three zones, you get three protoculture or... Uh, Money, uh, yeah. But income points, <laughs> yes. yeah. Yeah. And uh, and so I, I, and I did notice in your game, you cleaned house on, on those yeah. zones. Well, I, I just moved to those zones, and no one had the time or the money or the interest in clearing me out so i was getting nine protoculture per turn on that uh, yeah because you get three per three per square so yeah which was so helpful and uh so but no one wanted to clean me out everyone else was dealing with other priorities so i'm like okay fine that's all right yeah (laughs) Uh, another neat mechanic that they have into this game is so it's uh it's you each get out your a a hand of cards yeah but at, at the end of particular rounds bonus cards are added to certain to certain factions Yes. And there's six that are six bonus cards that are added in over the course of the game. Yes. And you play now, basically four rounds. So there's four cards that are going to be distributed to each. Now you did you did mention that you felt that you're last cuz you were the last to receive the bonus cards and you felt it was pretty OP. Yeah, like so I, the final assault card for me um, basically destroy all the other factions in New Macross City which is the, the, the main city of the game. <laughs> so destroy everyone, basically, uh, and um, then take two actions. So it just meant that I could wipe out uh, all the forces there, and then I could move, move in there with Chiron and win over all those citizens. You know, it was a pretty powerful um, Yeah. Move. Now, the counter to that, and it, it, was, it, it is a valid argument, is that people playing the game are going to after a few games are going to know that card is coming yes because this is these are not surprise cards these are no. these are face up the whole game and then and then dealt out yes so, and you know exactly when they get it so yeah, yeah and so you you would be able to sort of counter that to a point yeah uh you don't necessarily in our particular game we must have had i don't know like 15 guys on the on new macro city yeah so yeah it was, it was, it was a bloodbath but <laughs> But again, you didn't know that card was coming because it was our first not, game. Not pretty, so. yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And, and to have paid, we just I just didn't pay attention as much yeah. as I should have for that. But and then everyone, yeah. yeah, so everyone takes plays a card and takes their turn, and then uh, after that, you have kind of like a propaganda round from like as a coin where you go through a victory check and you gain income and and return pieces to their you know back to cities and stuff like that, and then you begin a new uh, round. Uh, and there's four rounds in the game, so I think probably you know once you know what you're doing, I probably I don't an know, hour. Would you say play? Yeah, I was gonna say about an hour, probably. Yeah, maybe hour so, and a half. Yep, yep. Yeah, so I think from that perspective, I think it's it's a really attractive. I think it's a, as an introduction to coin, for example, uh, some of which some of those games can last you know numerous hours. Yep, uh, yep. This I think is a really good uh, introduction to a coin like system. Um, which, and uh, I, I have to, I have to tell you that I really love the board. I think it's a beautiful oh, board yeah. that they've done. Yeah. It's gorgeous. Yeah, the components um, are nice. The the cards are are great. Like, I mean, obviously we're talking about digital components here, but I think it looks sharp. It does look really sharp. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So if you're a fan of the Robotech, I think you're gonna really like it. Yes, and and uh, we've really like discovered this. There's this whole realm of Robotech uh, games. Uh, that uh, this publisher does and uh, other you know it's it's a whole like genre yeah. so um i didn't really excited to sort of get a little get our, get our feet wet with it really it's awesome yeah and this is our first exposure to it but uh yeah. um but overall i mean i i don't know i i like the game overall i felt that it was uh it seemed to be you know pretty balanced uh, the, the 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 factions made sense more or less there were some things that I think it, to me, it strikes me that it would be really hard for certain, like the RDF, I think has, has their work cut out for them. Um, but yes. um, it's tough to say after one game. Well, I think Aaron did mention too, or Austin, uh, the, um, they are the hardest faction to play. Yes. Yeah. And I would agree with that just as a first impression. The other ones seem more intuitive and more, um, you know, straightforward, straightforward. The, the, the RDF, every action costs three, uh, um, Proto, uh, what is it? Proto- Protoculture. 
protocol yes. yeah and so um that's a lot of that's a lot of uh of resources you got to make sure you got a decent income in order to get stuff done um, i think but, for me the, the the biggest challenge was just getting my head around all the the uh robotech uh, terms and terminology. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the protoculture, the, you know, the, um, the Zentradi, the, you know, all these are, you know, just REF, RDF, all the, just all the different factions involved yes. and, and just sort of getting, uh, sort of oriented with that. And, and, uh, once that kind of fell into place, uh, the game became really manageable. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, yeah. And I feel that, you know, again, I think with, with some repeated play, this may actually, um, click a little bit more than than it did. I know early on, and this is true of any game, um, and especially coin games, is that a lot of times you're just pulling levers to see what happens. That's so right. It's part That's of the right. learning process is you just start like doing things, and it works or it doesn't, and then you gradually through trial and error and re, you know you re, reward you or punishment, you, you refine you, your play. Yes. 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 Yeah. So. so. Yeah, I did. Uh, I did really enjoy it, and I would definitely play it again. Yeah, well, I, I'm thinking maybe we we could uh, uh, see if uh, the only thing is we need four players. That was another kind of maybe downside. Uh, I don't think that, that there's any plans to do any sort of bots at this stage. So it is a they four... did they did talk about it loosely, but I think it's a down the road uh, project. Yeah, for them. yeah. So it is a four player or nothing kind of game. I don't think you can really, I think the, the way the factions are balanced out, I don't think you could, you know, have a one-on-one -on -one or a, a three on, you know, th you three could player possibly, game. I, I would argue that you could possibly do um, a two, 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 or uh, one, v, a two player game where, where one player takes the RDF and the R, R, E, F, R, E, F. Yep. And then the other player takes the AUL and the, um, uh, the, Z, the Z, the Zentradis. Yeah, because those two, those two kind of align closely or closer. Yes. Uh, to each other, so you could almost do, you know, if you wanted to play two factions and the other person does two factions. So I could see it being a two-player. It would yep. be a little bit clumsy, I think, but you could yeah. probably pull that off if you had to. Yeah, you could give it a try anyway. I know the way it works in Coin is that if you have multiple uh, factions like that, where you you have to win, you have to reach the victory conditions of both of them in order to actually win. And that's a pretty tall order, so you, it usually means you're playing a full game and then seeing who won the the most. <laughs> you right. Know? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. And that's how they do it. And so that's that's probably fine for this. Um, it would be, you know, but I I think probably ideally it's a it's a four player game. Oh, hundred percent. So yeah, yeah. You gotta have a gaming group in order to to pull this off. I think to be honest. Agreed. Um, yeah. But uh, but but if hey, if you've got four players and if you've got four players that like Robotech or oh. it, actually you're four players that, you know, coin players, you're looking for a change of pace, something similar, but but, uh, you know, a different in the, in the same challenge. vein. Right. Yeah. A yeah. very different genre. There's there's no historical fiction going on here. No, no, exactly. So, but yeah, I think it was a, it was a, definitely a, it was intriguing enough to uh, to warrant a, a, another look. And uh, if there are any fans of out there of Robotech, I I mean I've I I know that it's a uh, you know it's a, f a famous uh, classic series, but uh, I'm sure that uh, it, it's also a bit of an older one, so I don't know how many uh, fans are you know, of, of Robotech are out there versus fans of some of the newer series, the newer uh, anime uh, series that are out there. But uh, yeah. as a game, even if you don't really know the, the history of, of the series or you have vague knowledge, I think, you know, pl playthrough of the actual game itself is is fine. It's still manageable, know? 100%, yeah. Yeah. And I just wanted to give a shout out to, to the creators who uh, took a, a Saturday evening and, and walked us through it. And we... Yes. Uh, we really appreciate the time they took to uh, show us this game and showcase it to us. It was it was awesome. Yes, yeah. So, um, and so we'll be uh, we'll be doing another video or two on this one, um, like with playthroughs and that sort of thing. So, um, anyway, we'll uh, uh, hopefully that'll be something that uh, our audience will enjoy, and we hope you got it some value out of this one as well. Yes, and if there's any, any comments that you'd like to add to below, or anything that we missed, or anything that you noticed, please uh, please. Uh, comment below yes and while you're at it uh, please like and subscribe and uh, thank you so much for watching i'm cax <laughs> and i'm nato and this is legendary, legendary tactics, tactics. 
This is I'm NATO. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try that again. <laughs> I don't know if I should leave that in or not. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That might be <laughs> too much. <laughs> I'm NATO. I was so excited for it. I'm, <laughs> I blew it. I just have Randy in mind now every time. <laughs>